Good day creative friends, I hope you're doing well. So last week I did this painting and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I decided to do another one in the same style but with a different color scheme. All the supplies I'm using in this video will be listed in the description as usual. And I'm sure you've noticed from the title that I'll be answering some of your most frequently asked questions, which incidentally, um, how to find the description keeps coming back, but I will be doing a separate video on that sometime in the month of September. That way I can refer those that are needing help on that topic to a quick video instead of me having to type the instructions all the time. So much like the painting of last week, I'm going to start by just dropping some blobs of paint. I have not planned this. I know I'm going to do florals in a vase, but the placement of the blobs of paint are quite random. I prefer to work that way, but if that doesn't suit your style, you can always sketch out beforehand where you want to place the flowers and the vase. So the first question is, did you study art? And the answer is no. I am self-taught, but sometimes I wish I'd gone to art school to learn the basics like color theory and composition. And in case you're curious, I've been seriously dedicated to this creative journey for almost seven years now. And it shocked the heck out of me <laughs> today when I did the calculation, but yeah. I do get this quite often. Uh, some of you have detected an accent. Um, I'm wanting to know where I'm from. So I am French Canadian. I live in the suburbs of Montreal. And fun fact, I have learned how to speak English by watching the Partridge family. <laughs> I know I'm dating myself here, but I was in love with David Cassidy. So I would clip magazine articles of him and translate with an old dictionary in my scrapbooks. <laughs> and then when I started working uh, in the corporate world, English was, I mean, you had to, you had to know how to speak English if you wanted to have the best jobs. So I basically made sure that um, I was around English speaking people. And then I married someone who was brought up in Toronto.
I painted the vase the same way I did the one for last week, but uh, when looking at the final painting, I realized that I have put quite quite a lot of blue mixed in with the paints gray, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted the vase to be darker, kind of like the one from last week, but I didn't realize it until everything was done and I didn't want to go over what I had done especially when I had already added that beautiful gold in there um, so it's going to stay like this so obviously before doodling you need to let the piece dry so this is what it looks like I just love the gold there I love the way it dissipates but not too much so that you still get the full impact of it and another question that I get often is what are your favorite pens for doodling and this also I will address in a separate video because the answer would be way too long for me to include it in here. Uh, there's different pens for different style of doodling. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So I want to talk a bit about the doodling style for this particular painting. Last week I have done some flowers with contours around them and that's one of those things where I wished I hadn't done because I wasn't consistent with that throughout the painting. And for this one I decided for no outline whatsoever. So I restricted the doodles inside the paint blobs but did not define uh, the outline basically so it was a lot of fun uh, because there are some blobs that are in my eyes over and or in front of other ones so I had to really uh, focus on that to render the proper illusion that I had in my head the only thing that I wish I had done but I couldn't find the proper way to do it is for instance this flower and I have two other ones um, is blue and it's the same color as the vase and because of the doodling style that I chose for these particular flowers there's no distinction between the flower and the vase like we don't know where it stops and where it begins so and I couldn't figure out the proper way to do it and so I decided to just leave it alone. I contemplated adding a shadow um, underneath the flower and it, I thought it would look weird because nowhere else in the painting do I have um, shading. So I just decided to let it be, finally. I get this question fairly regularly, uh, people wanting to know what is my favorite brand of watercolors or what set that I use. And the only uh, set that I use is one that was given to me by a friend of mine and it's the Mugello. So this is the one that I usually, when I, when I paint with the Mugello colors, I don't mix with other brands. I'm not sure why, but 
it's just convenient it's in just one separate case so if I want to reach for that one um, I'll use it's it's pretty much complete it's the 36 color set that I have but my current watercolor palette is one that I put together myself I buy my paint in tubes and then I squeeze an amount in uh, little plastic half pans and then I can build my own palette in in a in a separate case and it changes sometimes <laughs> it evolves sometimes I will swap a color for another one because I'm not using a particular color and in my set I have all kinds all brands I have Daniel Smith, Sennelier, Core, Windsor & Newton, M. Graham, Renaissance, uh, Kramer, um, Holbein I'm sure I'm forgetting some but as far as a favorite favorite I really don't have one the only thing I can add to this is that Daniel Smith has some interesting colors um, their Prima Tech line is quite awesome because it's made of ground stone natural stones and uh, some colors are also super granulating which I love I decided to use a lead pencil for some of the doodles because last week I used a Copic marker that uh, was quite light it was a warm gray I believe and I had to go over the lines twice it was giving me a hard time and it be just became tedious so this week I decided to go with this lead pencil which is a 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil by Muji and I love it because it gives me that very thin line that I like and it's a hard lead it's an HB so I quite enjoyed it and I think it looks good for this painting obviously if I'm going to give this painting to someone or put it up on my wall I would seal it with Kmar varnish by Krylon but um, yeah I would not hesitate using pencil in fact there's a lot of traditional watercolorists who will do their sketch with pencil and leave some areas untouched uh, by the paint so yeah it's something that you will find a lot in watercolor paintings as well not in the style that I'm doing right now but um, it is sometimes quite present in other artists work Do you do tutorials on Patreon? Uh, sometimes, but not often. This is not the style of videos that I usually make. I reserve that for classes, online classes, because that allows me to be a little bit more thorough and with less time restrictions. Um, 
I mean, I do the occasional tutorial and I also try to inject a few techniques in my videos, but not the step by step. My videos are more like, I want to say, inspirational than technique driven because my main focus is to get you to um, either become creative or stay creative and just uh, not be bothered by too many rules. If I if I talk about specifics, that's fine too. There are people that are looking for that, but my main mission is to help you find your creative voice and I believe that you don't really need a specific technique for that or step-by-step -step instructions. All you need to do really is just to commit to a few basic brush strokes or pen strokes on a piece of paper and then you move forward from that. So basically to come back to the question, uh, Patreon is a place where I offer more of the same style of videos that I publish here, but that you will not find here on YouTube because they are exclusive to Patreon. Where can I find the gold that you always use? What is your favorite gold? <laughs> it's Pale Gold by Kramer Pigments. And I always add the link to the paint in the description just because it's not something that you will be able to buy at your regular art supply store or on Amazon. It's strictly sold by Kramer Pigments in New York City. There's also a European link as well because the head office of Kramer Pigments is in Germany and no I don't have any affiliation with Kramer Pigments I, I buy my own paint I buy my own gold <laughs> Here I'm busting out the Posca white marker. I completely forgot that I have these. They're fantastic. They're super opaque. You don't need to go over your lines twice. And I could have used that for the white dots, but um, I just thought of it at the, at the last minute. And that provides the perfect contrast that I needed for these flowers, especially against that super dark Payne's Gray. Um, I think I'm going to be using this more often in my paintings. So I guess this piece 
is more like a mixed media one because I have watercolor, I have paint, I have ink. Um, what else do I have on there? Oh, lead pencil, graphite. <laughs> so yeah, I guess it is a mixed media piece. So this question comes up all the time. What is that symbol that you draw? Um, in small on your paintings and how did you come about it so basically it is what we refer to as our chops it's my artist's signature and it's just cc written uh, vertically i guess and the two syllables are split up and they're mirrored mirroring each other and then i just draw a rectangle around it um how i came about it i just thought of different compositions basically it's just me sitting down at my desk one day and trying out different options to settle on this one I really love how this painting turned out and here are the two side by side at the last minute I decided to add a little bit of gold in some of the flowers because I realized that I had less gold on this one than on the one from last week but we're done so I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope that you've also enjoyed me answering some of your questions don't forget to check out the description for the list of supplies and for the links to my social media uh, thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to my awesome patrons for their support on Patreon. And on that note, please stay safe and healthy, keep creating, and I will see you soon.